Yeah, he he kind of suits the tone of the start of the game. Um, when it's very subdued, but now that it's gone like complete B movie, yeah, he's still the very subdued villain. Which is strange, and I, he's a good villain. He's just he like, is, yeah. He just belongs in a different game. Cause like, I really like the uh, the tone that's been established um, by this series. Like it's perfectly captured in Resident Evil Seven. And again, they do the same thing where it starts with this combination between horror and then there's the camp elements mm-hmm. where you have Jack Baker walking around quoting Ash Williams from The Evil Dead, <laughs> um, doing burnouts in a car while saying groovy and having a chainsaw battle with you. Oh my God. And then it goes like straight horror at the end. So this is their plan. I literally, I love how they leave just the thing saying, this is my plan. Yeah. Just on a table. It's like, oh, what are you? A stupid villain that's going to monologue. No, I wouldn't do that. You you missed something. Did I? Yep. Look at the roof of where you just came in. Or is it the next section? Uh, Is it not the throne room? Yes, it is. My bad. Because I I knew the one in the throne room, but I didn't think there was one there. Yeah, Jack Baker is such a cool fucking villain. And like, there's bits, there's a moment in the game where he just walks through a wall. And it's hilarious. <laughs> but then they, like, spoilers, I guess. Like, he stopped being a threat at, like, the five-hour mark. Isn't there just int- weird goo creatures everywhere? Yeah, and then they introduce just a um, more, um, like, simple and straightforward horror villain. And then they kind of dial it back a little bit and then bring in another crazy, weird asshole who's, like, taunting you and setting up, like, Saw-style traps. Oh, wow. So they, they ride that line enough in that one where they keep leaning into the funny stuff. They, they never go straight horror for too long. Because I've seen the two villains of like Jack Baker and then there's like the woman in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those are the only two real bits I've seen. And there's their son as well, who uh, basically right. spends the entire game just taunting you from a TV screen. It just turns into Saul. Ah, okay. Oh, these guys know me. And like some of the DLC for that game is hilarious. Like one of the DLCs is just oh get Jack some uh, food for his birthday party. And he's got like a little party hat and stuff. It's like they know the tone they're going for. Yeah, I can hear. And um, it's weird to me that people complain so much about Ashley in this game, but when you actually think about it, like what we spent one small chapter, like half an hour with her there, and then like we don't see her again for ages, and you don't actually spend that long with her. She's also not that much of a hindrance. Oh god! Me- oh, I hate that he guy. Was waiting. He, get- he gets me every time. Every time he just blows, like gets me with that. You know, there's only a couple of times in the game where she's an active hindrance to you. Most of the time, she's barely there. Yeah, like they programmed her to just stand behind you. I think the awkward ones is when it's like she's programmed to duck, but she ducks at real, really inopportune times and stuff or when you leave her by a door and then she gets grabbed and immediately kidnapped yeah which is shit like that is really annoying but that's on you and you gotta learn don't leave her by a door yeah but the other one is uh, the only time I say she's actually a problem it's oddly enough it's the literal first time you have her with you it's when you go back to the village with Ashley yeah and there's all those bear traps on the floor but she has a nasty habit of walking over them she does because she's only programmed to follow you in a straight line so if you run through them all and weave through them, she won't weave. She just runs and beelines yeah. towards you and steps into the bear traps. That's the only time in the game when that really happens. And then, Carl, all you need to do is shoot her uh, with the Punisher and <laughs> like get the piercing did. damage. But that's the only real time in the game where it's kind of annoying because she just she's probably just following a straight line. So let's just have a green at her. Oh yeah, man, like... Uh... Oh, you missed a room. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't remember which one was which. <laughs> I was about to say, you missed the room there. There's some treasure in here. You missed the little treasure room. Yeah. Oh, God. Look at it. He was taking a break. He, <laughs> he was, was hoping. This is the break room. He was hoping that Leon Wait, would what? find him. Here you got some treasure. Look well, at there's that. There's a noise of someone somewhere. You know what, there's Lucas? still someone. Just leave him. Yeah. He, he's the survivor. He gets to live. Oh, God. No. Oh! Oh, do it. There we go. I love how, like, the way that this game works, because now we're in different areas, that guy's like, oh, okay. Yeah, he ceases to exist. He just walks through the door and it's like, oh. Oh, it's it this bit. I just keep getting like, this game is so long. It really is. I thought is. we'd already had this bit. It's like, no, man, that's not till later. Look at that. that's the thing is, you get to the end of chapter four, like, you, you kill Salazar and it's like quite a short game. You're like, oh, one chapter left. It's only chapter five. And it's like, half the game. It is. So this is the moment 
This is. Yeah, this is the America bit. So I think, we... as much as um, I know, like, I've watched speedruns of this, and because you can't skip this cutscene, it's, like, the really annoying part for speedrunners, but this, to me, proved that, cook, like, the quick time events... Can work. Can work. Yeah, and make a really cool cutscene. Because you're constantly on edge. Yeah. And they make sense as well. They don't just randomly happen. Like, I contend that the ones in Bayonetta are the worst. Oh, because God. They, they happen fucking nowhere. They happen so infrequently, and they instantly kill you. And the ones in this instantly kill you. But I think the point I've already made is that they happen enough where you are constantly aware they are a thing. Whereas mm -hmm. in Bayonetta, they happen infrequently enough where you forget. So you'll be watching a cutscene, and then it's like, oh, you're dead. And it completely craters your rank. Well, there's only about three of them in the fucking game. And they instantly kill you every time. Yeah. Leave Ashley out of this. Oh, I needed her to oh, I still think I'm getting some weird audio, so I do apologise, but I don't... Again, like, I had, had sorted these problems out, and then every now and then something's just wrong. I love this bit, though. What? But I don't the know perfect if it's just I hope it is. That perfect sick backflip. Like, this is just... Proving how fucking badass Leon actually is. Oh, yeah, because if people have not realised it, Krause has been infected oh. with the last Plagueis, and it makes yeah. him super strong. Like, he's got super strength, as evidenced by what he's about to do right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to mash. Mash as hard as you can. Oh. Love it. Oh. And he wins. Krause 100% wins. Oh, yeah. He kicks your ass because you're not prepared. Oh, there it is. Like, oh, you thought Umbrella wasn't going to be related in this game? Oh, it's the switch over that gets me. Like, you're mashing on one button yeah. and then it's like, no, I'll mash a different button. Yeah. So this is the um, this is the proof. Oh, this is where you learn. Oh, yeah, Crowd's got super strength because he does this. Like, oh, my God. The leg strength required to do yeah. that. He jumped like a clean 30 feet into the air. Oh my god. And did a backflip during it. Death, is it? Oh god. Oh. And so if you notice, well, he actually is... picks up Krauser's knife. Yeah. So now from the rest of the game, you use Krauser's knife because it's much bigger. And I just find it weird that. It's really cool though, and weird at the same time that. Oh yeah, um, Ada just appears out of nowhere, but then they did put in the Ada missions to kind of contextualise it a bit. Yeah, like she's on and the island doing missions as well, and she likes on. Leon, so she wants to get, I don't even care. Fuck that. Fuck that. He's, he's not as interesting as Salazar, because Salazar's no. like a snivelling shithead, and it's great. I love everything he says. But yeah, that note, if you notice, like, um, I think it's Krauser, he's using his knife, and Leon picks up his knife. Yeah, yeah. Well, I believe they have the same knife because they were in the same unit here. Yeah, Krause's like, Krause knife always looked bigger to me. Ah, there we go. Krause's a little bit bigger, guys. Oh, God damn it. Also, that thing is, oh, you saw him leap 30 feet into the air. Yeah. And think about that, like the leg strength required to do that, what Krause must wear. I want. Easy 200 pounds. So I um, know this game very well, and I think I do that every fucking time. Just go, straight, go the wrong way. It literally so, points you in the direction you go in, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to go the other way. We think about a 200 pound man and he's using his leg through nothing but his leg strength propelling himself a clean 30 40 feet into the air yeah so propelling a 200 pound mass 30 40 feet into the air someone do the math on that uh he can probably exert as like your legs about twice as strong as your arms so half as much strength he can exert with his arms and then leon is holding off a stab to the throat <laughs> I love this. Call this time. Which my favourite bit is, this isn't a button prompt, you just walk underneath it. Oh. There we go. Oh! Whoa! Oh! Leon would have Leon? survived. Do you know what I think they put this moment in for? It is. Leon would have survived the first Resident Evil movie. <laughs> because the bit where Colin Salmon's oh! like, oh! I love that bit. Turn around, see it. I love this. Oh, nothing yet. Okay, okay. Because they clearly put this bit in. Because the first, it's the hypest part of the very first movie. Huh. I thought the first movie was inspired by this moment. No, this moment, the, the movie came first. Oh, okay. Let's run towards it. Oh, Leon! Oh! 
Well, yeah, you can run he towards it. He just ran it. up a fucking wall. Uh, as well, what the material is that door made of? Yeah. Steel. But um, you can run towards that if you want. And you run towards it and you get the button prompt quicker. Oh, right, okay. So you got to do it. What, oh. shoot down this? Oh, damn it. I believe, is that the last treasure for the cat, I think? No, no, no it's just another elegant headdress. One of a kind, Lucas, one of a kind. Third one you've found so far. Are you not going to sit in the throne? You could fuck off if you want to sit in that throne. <laughs> huh? Oh. Question mark. Oh, Leon. Leon! Wait, mate, wait, mate. Where's... Yeah, the yeah. swag pose! And obviously, just doing this in the fucking gangster jacket. Oh, it's the absolute best. Yeah. The best screenshot. But what, the reason you do that as well is because it resets your thing and then you see the elegant headdress up there. Yeah. So there is a reason to do it where it tells you that that's there. And it's nice that they tell you this late in the game. Oh yeah, if you turn around, sometimes there's treasure. Thanks guys, what a dick move. <laughs> Last mission. But yeah, holy shit, Leon's a fucking badass. I'm pretty sure though this game came first. Uh, uh, let's double check that actually. I can do that now. You can. So, uh, I think the Resident Evil movie came first and they put that in as a reference to the movie. I wasn't sure which way around it was, but I assumed that the movie was referring to the game. Let's find out. So I'm probably getting one. I'm probably super wrong, and everyone's really mad about it. <laughs> so Resident Evil movie. God, God. First one. God, it's just God. called Resident Evil, and it came out in 2002. And oh yeah, that, that was before Resident, Resident Evil. Then. Resident Evil was 05. Let's double check. Or because you think though, like in your head, it makes sense. Uh, yeah, Resident Evil Four came out in two thousand five, so yeah, the movie was first. Uh, but in your head, it makes sense that oh, because Resident Evil Four is what made Resident Evil big again. Yeah, it kind of put it back. It makes you think, oh yeah, well, Resident Evil wasn't really that popular before Resident Evil Four. Like, that's what put it into the mainstream because this game was like like earth shattering in its impact on like just media in general. Because it was a it's popular. Like, no. um franchise yeah but it wasn't it was really... a popular like horror franchise but it wasn't mainstream until no. four have you not checked uh, that little room behind him as well you can go in there i just went in there oh, oh right i must while i was checking my phone yeah yeah i apologize god call not even paying attention to the run so it does make oh, sense yeah no. yeah it's this bit you think oh yeah resident evil 4 is what i basically put resident evil back on the map it's like it's the reboot of the series it's now uh the movies came first it's like oh i don't know resident evil came before the movies but in my head, Resident Evil 4, like Renaissance, was this game. Resident Evil is Renaissance, yeah, yeah. And how does it make you feel that one of the best games of all time um, has a direct reference to the Resident Evil movies? Yeah, it's not great. I think maybe I just, yeah, maybe I told myself they must be referencing this because the other way around would be fucking stupid. Because why would you... Then again, though, the first movie I think is quite good. As it's a standalone, like, just generic zombie action movie. Mm. But, like, you can tell. Oh. Oh, no. They did find it. You should have been thrown off the edge. Why would you not throw it off the cliff? <laughs> then Leon's got to waste all his time going down the fucking cliff. Oh. Oh. This is one of the most out-of-nowhere fucking moments of this entire game. It is, yes. And how also, did how you... did Leon get in there? He dived. I know, but like it, it was so far away. <laughs> to be fair, we've just seen Leon do all that cool shit. But um, how did you interpret this enemy then? Like, what do you? Th uh, because we, I've always said we just come out of the lab, still so they're experimenting. It's where the regenerators it came from. Yeah. I always thought, oh, it's just an experiment where they've just shoved a load of these monsters together to see what they can make. Um. I've never really thought about it with this enemy because for me this enemy is just like it's like why are you here why are you part of the game because as again like the only oh my god the only like, real thing you can do is contextualize it for yourself and mm -hmm. instead of oh everything else having really cool setup and everything and there might be a little hint in the notes or whatever but not in the notes but um sadler does say uh, maybe you want to fight it he does but again, that's not much of a hint or... It's not anything cool that sets up this character. No, it's just you are warned. Um, it will deal with you. It's like, what's it? And it's that. Which, because they refer to it as just like an it. That's why I was thought, oh, Sadler made it in the lab. The same lab where the regenerators come out. But I still think it would have been much cooler 
Oh, I didn't do it. Ah, oh, fair. Does that work? Uh, I know it does on one of them, but I, I thought it was that one, but it mustn't be. Oh, so you can set it up before you have to fight it again. Yeah. Because I've, I've watched, like, I've said I've watched speedruns of this, and they use explosions and stuff to get ahead of the game, basically. So you don't have to fight it. Got that one. As I was pulling the trigger. And That's another room. real bad part of this for me, is moments like that where I've gone to shoot the correct thing, and then it's just, oh, dodge. Is that and what? If you're wondering why is Lucas not fighting it, it's because it doesn't matter. You nope. can't kill it in this part, you, you can can't. only um, hurt it enough to make it run away, but it always comes back. Yeah, so I always interpret it as, oh, it's just something they cooked in the lab, but I always thought, because I do all of this, like, law building in my own head. It's like, okay, yeah, so you do, yeah. I've, I've, I've probably done it like three or four times in this very playthrough. Uh, but I always thought it'd be cooler if this was like a super regenerator. Because the regenerator is established as a really cool threatening enemy. And they have a lot of setup. Like the entire walk through the laps is to introduce that. Yeah. So like when you go through like this petri dish is full of flesh. It's like, oh yes, this is regenerator flesh. So maybe a super regenerator would have been cooler. Or it would have been not cool. I think anything would have been cooler than this enemy. It just looked really lame. I've already point. mentioned it a few times, like alluding to this fight. It is my, my, by far my least favorite part of this entire game. Also, what is this that you're in? The fuck is this? Yeah, like just everything is just all oh, this floating shipping containers. There's a boss that comes out of nowhere. Literally out of nowhere. I do like this though. Everything is really unexplained. And it's like in, so, in a game where, like, you know, world building is so fucking important. I think it might be this one, you know. Do you get the feeling, though, or can you, like, I've never had this confirmed, or I've never looked into it, but do you get the feeling that oh, man, they designed that, that enemy, thought it was cool, and then just figured out a way to slot it into the story? Yeah. They didn't want to waste all the time they put into designing it. I, I reckon that's probably what it is. I've just, well, oh, we, uh, we cut this bit. What do we do? We had this really cool boss, and it's just like, Ah, oh, whack him in here, I guess. You see, it doesn't even have a last plague or something. That, great, thanks, game. Double backflip. The double attack. Yeah, I think you throw the uh, grenade over this door and ah, it's so the light here. You can, you, can, you, can, you don't have to do the run all yeah. the way around. Because I think I, that was it. And then I threw my grenade and fucked up the shot. I think it was like right in my face. That is supposed to be a last plague. It's like a super last plague. Yeah. But it doesn't look like one. It doesn't. It doesn't have the same so colour scheme. It's got like the weird blades on it and shit. Which the Blast Plagas do have, but they also have like the weird um, dead space yellow pus. Yeah. To etc. But it just doesn't make sense. So let's just get some speed. Try and make sure he doesn't fucking get him away. Okay, there we go. So maybe if they'd uh, made that thing on its back look like a Blast Plagas. Just run to the end, it's fine. Yeah, I'm going to, but just god damn. If it oh, looked like fuck a Fuck off! Bye! I, just everything when... about that fight. Just, oh, for fuck's sake! It's as well that it's not fun. No, nothing about that fight is fun. There's also nothing, because you're trapped in an enclosed space, because they've already done that part of the game. They've already done that. And it's when you fight the right hand. Yeah. Which is a way cooler fight because it's a really cool enemy. It's one that is repeatedly shown to you throughout the game. Yep. Because you constantly have looks of it stood by Sal um, Salazar's side. So it's not only hinted at, it's also like, oh, this is a thing. And you can say, I'm going to fight that. And it's awesome. And the area you fight it in is really cool. And there's lots of like contextual stuff you can do. Yep. And then it has the thing of it's chasing you through the sewers. And you get like, the, the build up to its like, eventual appearance. And the thing is, all they could have done is had you skip that entire bit and you just fight this random enemy here instead. Or have it chase you. Yeah, but what, like, if it's going to appear out of nowhere, it could have just appeared out of nowhere in this area. Yeah, after Sadler tells you, oh, I'm going to send it to fight you, and I was like, what's it? <laughs> I love how fast he runs. So we'll get some, like, speed on the go. Why not? Be a speedy boy. Oh, come on, Leon. Come on, man, you got this. Oh, man! Oh! Look at this, look at this rapidness. I will say, though, it's super fucking awesome that you can kill the bottom section. 
Like, you can kill the bottom section of it and the top section still fights. That's really awesome. Oh, oh, yeah, Leon. Do you think? Oh, I've killed it. But it's the top section. Oh. That stayed, it's the top section that stayed alive. As you can see when you're shooting the top section as well. Yeah. Like there's the yellow pus from a last Plagas explosion coming out. Oh, fucking awesome. So I think the intention or like the idea behind it is like, oh yeah, do you like the last Plagas that pops out of like El Gigante, for example? Yeah, it's yeah. just the evolved version of that. Oh my god, god. Like, slash it. So really what I should have done is just buy a rocket launcher. Maybe. Because it is a huge bullet sponge. Yeah, it, it is really a bullet is. sponge in every sense of the word because unlike every other boss in the game which either has a weak point or something in the environment you can exploit to do extra damage. That's this one is the just two barrels, but this one is literally just shoot it until it dies. Yeah. Like even if you think like even um, the like discount Del Lago because that's just like a gimmick fight it is. Every other boss fight at least has something you can do to help. Like you have uh, with the right hand you have the um, the liquid nitrogen. Yeah. With. Um, and this you have the doors, but with Mendez you have um, you can climb up and down, and he's jumping along the rafters. And you can shoot him off the rafters and like use it there. Yeah, woohoo! Party time. Just fuck that fight. Fuck that boss. It's fuck a cool gimmick. Fuck it. Would it have been I cooler it. if it was just the top bit? Maybe yeah. It's, I can't tell what that's supposed to be. And I, I'm just, my resources are drained so hard after that. Because um, Del Largo is a salamander. El Gigante is just one dude who had a lot of Las Plagas put inside of him. Yeah. Then you have the Regenerators, which is like, you know, it's necrotic flesh brought to life with the Las Plagas. Um, the uh, Novistadors are uh, like locusts or insects that have been infected with like the weird goo. What's but that? Then this is just a thing. Like half horse, half scorpion, half man. He's a scorpion centaur. I mean, he's 150% or something, apparently. Can't. He's, uh, he's done it, you can't stop him. He's, he's got three hearts. Ooh. Look at this. And then, for absolutely no reason, you can go back across. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want to I go think back... it's like, I guess if you miss like the herb there or something. But... Oh, you want to go talk to the merchant? 